Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome back to the Automotive Market Minute, which may or may not take just over a minute. My name is Steven Georgella. My name is Philip Trubertowski, and we are going to be recapping October for y'all. So let's go ahead and jump into the last month in review. On today's Market Minute, we're going to show you guys where we believe rates are headed. More on that coming up in just a minute. Also, new vehicle sales were down 10% in September. And lastly, we have a dealer case study and why it is so important to match your inventory with your actual market. Now, uh, I wanted to touch on a couple things about where we believe rates are headed. Monetary policy is restrictive. Uh, the Fed had a meeting last week. They kept rates the same. They believe that they're putting downward pressure on economic activity and inflation. Now, the Fed is not quite yet confident that they uh, that rates are high enough to finish the fight, and so they're not willing to forego a future rate hike. But the question is, is it enough to slow the economy down and bring inflation back down to two percent? And as and of on, right now, go ahead. No, you're on, on that real quick. And having discussions with a couple of guys that I play golf with, they had been discussing the fact that automotive would show first of all where things are at, and then they're on the real estate side, specifically commercial real estate. And so they discuss, they brought up the fact that three to six month delay and not only, and, and, and sometimes 12 month in not only real estate, but also uh, in the stock market. And so he had actually dug in more into some of the data that we have. And he just sat there and he's like, this is the indicator. Like this is, this is the ultimate, where are we really at? The stock market, that's emotion. Let's look at these. Let's look at what's happening in automotive all the way down to traffic and lead volume and then get to closing percentages and then look at what kind of cars they're buying, new versus used, the uh, the values, uh, MSRPs of those vehicles. And so if you put that whole thing together, that's why you and I since August have been sitting here and going, well, going back to November of last year when you called out to, to Andrew and said, hey, your average MSRP needs to drop quickly with your market. And that was very successful for him. But fast forwarding to now, I, I understand it's going to make really life really tough first and foremost for automotive dealers. But like you said, at a macro level, they still have jobs. And they're even though they're outspending their job, job openings and such make it seem as if everything's fine. They do. Uh, we have seen a major correction by the S&P. Uh, it's now actually under the 200-day uh, moving average, but uh, we may see a Santa rally as uh, we historically have with pre-election years. Santa. So <laughs> who, who knows? Uh, the Atlanta Fed, they are predict predicting that Q4 GDP is going to come in at around 1.2%. It's much lower than where it did come in at Q3. Uh, and we have also seen unemployment start to tick up. Uh, unemployment came in at 3.9%. Uh, it's up from a historic low of 3.4%. And continued claims have kind of appeared to bottom in September. And initial claims have historically followed that. So uh, we are starting to see the labor market. Uh, at least there is some evidence that the labor market is starting to soften. But uh, yeah, as of right now, the Fed has kept rates paused. But Let's go ahead and keep on moving in. Here's a dealer case study. Steve, take it away. Yeah, so what we tell our dealers is this, is Fountain Forward wants to come to you with this macro market information and the information that we're collecting from our dealers across the country. And we wanna give you action steps. Yes, we like talking about the intricacies because trying to play Nostradamus is fun, uh, <clears throat> but it comes down to what you guys can do with this information. And so here are the nuts and bolts that uh, we can give you to ensure that you do have the most success because you can't control that marketplace. And so first of all, an example of a marketing budget and then the average MSRP of a dealer's units on the lot, okay? So just take a little mental snapshot. You see it's a flat budget across the board. After starting with Fountain Forward, we like to keep consistent budgets, but then look at their average MSRP. Now watch what happens on the next slide. Okay, so now you're gonna see the conversion rates. As you saw the average MSRP go down, you saw the conversion rates go up. And of course you may say to yourself, well, duh. Okay, well, if it's well, duh, let's go do it because that is the way to ensure that you're selling the most. And one of the things that we'll talk about at the end is level one, two, and three. If you're a client of ours, you know what we're talking about. If I've presented information to you, you know what we're talking about. Uh, 
This just comes down to what your objective is. What is your North Star? If your North Star is to sell as many vehicles as possible, this is the Yellow Brick Road. And so again, dealer didn't spend any different amount. Here's their sales volume increase. Now, if you go to the next page, here's the relationship between the average MSRP and their sales volume. <clears throat> of course, when you look at media mix modeling at level one, meaning the money you spend on marketing and where you spend it, you want to get as much bang for your buck. But depends on what your market looks like. It depends on what credit scores look like. And it depends on what they can afford. And so if you're not matching it with, you're uh, matching your vehicles with them. Why should you increase sales? And you can't think of it as, well, we're going to pull from farther, et cetera. Every 10 miles that you go is going to increase your cost per acquisition. So yes, you can spend your way to a sales increase, but the majority of dealers right now are, I want to keep what I have. I want to hold the line. And if I can have a chance to increase sales over time, I'd like to, but holding the line right now is as important as anything. And that's just from my conversations with dealers. So you can overspend or, and this is just making it as simple as possible, you can match that inventory as much as possible with uh, the volume buyers in your marketplace. And so my takeaways from this, slide six there, Phil, this is the most successful dealers. The sales training is literally every day and they are as fast as possible. And I know you're probably sitting there going, well, duh. Well, it's like, I'm just telling you what's what's making them successful. They are absolutely killing it. And we have secret shoppers now to make sure that we can hear dozens and dozens and dozens of them each month and go, is there a correlation between fantastic secret shoppers and a deal dealer sales volume? And I can tell you, and I think about Griffith Ford and San Marcos. Oh yeah, there's a direct correlation. Contacts per lead, average response time, choice of word, proactively bringing up the trade. You wanna know how to sell more cars right now? Yes, again, media mix modeling, great merchandising, great marketing as a whole. But you can see that I'm really focusing on the entire thing to ensure that you get the absolute most juice from the squeeze. Uh, so I talked about proactively bringing up the trade, offers at 0% and low lease payments are, are, uh, are highly effective right now. The percent off MSRP, we have not been seeing, historically we have not seen success with that. And also recently we have not. Would love to hear some feedback if you guys have. Um, I talked about matching your inventory and then prioritizing subprime or you should expect sales to slump, especially if you're in rural stores. I understand it sounds crappy, especially if you have a, a GMC store in the middle of nowhere. But again, match your market. And if you match your market, you'll have the most at bats possible. If you want to sit there and hold the line, sell less units and just try to keep things, you know, make it a little money, et cetera. But you don't want to change your uh, position in the market. I understand that. But that's what that's what it comes back down to those uh, conversion rates versus the amount that you spend. There's no real way uh, out of that in general. You, the consumer has needs, and you've got to uh, match your offers with their needs. Uh, Phil, on the last one there, just again showing guys in market demand at level one. That's the money you spend on marketing. Level two is the merchandising, uh, ensuring you have the right inventory, you have the right offers, you have the right website layout, et cetera, et cetera. And level three is lead nurturing absolutely hammering the CRM every single morning, looking at every single lead from the day before and ensuring that your salespeople know that the pot of gold is not at the end of the rainbow. It's at the other side of your CRM notes. <laughs> yeah. And, and we have a saying, and it's really shown true over these last couple of months as there has been more and more compression on the U.S. consumer, but there is no magic bullet for dealers or no secret recipe for dealers that want to increase their sales. It truly is all about the fundamentals. The fundamentals done well and done consistently, that will yield results for your dealership. All about the fundies. On behalf of Phil Trebitowski, my name is Steven Dragella. Thank you for tuning in and have a fantastic November. Goodbye. Goodbye.